but y'all welcome to another episode of buzz boys and today we fresh off another w <laughs> we fresh off another w made that three in a row eight of our last nine or is that nine of our last ten i don't know but either way it's impressive as hell and uh you know the hornets get a quick one at home we're going right back on the road tomorrow night um in Houston and then again play the Bulls so it was like it was literally was like a quick pit stop at home just one game coming off the road and then we go right back on the road but uh W he failed me W and uh and, and in pretty impressive fashion we basically dominated the whole second half um and look I'm just gonna come right out and say this is something that I've been was thinking the whole game bro we be a team with a dominant big without Mason Plumley, So we don't really need him. That's what tonight showed me. We don't need Plumley at all. At all. Because, I mean, like, in what scenario are we going to play a center that's more dominant than Carl Anthony Towns where we say, oh, yeah, we need to get Plumley in there? So tonight really just proved that we don't need a traditional center. Whether it's PJ, Richards, Miles playing small ball five, we don't need Plumlee. That's what tonight showed me. That's what tonight showed me. Um, you know, and I'm proud of the guys. Everybody battled. It was literally such a team effort. Like, just the points all across the board. The points all across the board. Um, it's like everybody had like 18, 19, um, now you feel me, Gordon Hayward, 18 points, six rebounds, six assists, Miles Bridges, 18 points, seven rebounds, um, he had a couple, but he had a block, Gordon Hayward had three blocks, Gordon Hayward, man, he, he played good, he could have got the free throw line a whole lot more, PJ Washington, 17 points, six rebounds in his first game back, I mean, he, he played the other night. But, like, he only played, like, five minutes. Like, you know, uh, this is kind of his first game back. Terry Rozier, 15 points. LaMelo, 10 points. 13 assists. Could have been, like, 17, 18 assists. We, we we blew a lot of layups and dunks. Um, you feel me? He has six rebounds. And then you got Kelly Oubre going for 27 off the bench. Then McDaniels, he has 14 points, eight rebounds off the bench. So it's like, bro, it was just an all-around team effort. And then James Booknight and Kai Jones both get their first career points tonight. And you just love to see it. Um, shoot, Nick Richards, Nick Richards ain't, you know, do nothing too crazy. He had two points, three rebounds. He had four fouls, though. So for me, he ain't really, you know. But P.J. Washington and Miles also had five fouls apiece. So, you know, I can't really get on Nick for having four because they, they both had five. Um, nobody was really in foul trouble tonight, and Martin was kind of quiet tonight. He had six points, but you know he did it. But he did what he does. He take he took his charges and he took his charges and stuff like that. Um, you know, Martin just makes winning plays, and uh, man, I, I, I'm proud of his team. I'm looking at everybody's plus minus, and I mean, like I said, um, you know, you don't you think Cody's not doing stuff out there, but he is, bro. He's a lockdown defender. I mean, he had the second highest plus minus. Uh Kelly Oubre's plus minus is twenty one. He had the highest. Cody Martin's right behind him at nineteen. Then you got McDaniels at fourteen, Gordon Hayward at thirteen. And uh, you know, this is what I was really talking about when I said I hope that McDaniels keeps playing when PJ comes back. <clears throat> Because I single-handedly believe that he deserves to play. You know, McDaniels is a 6'10 forward who can make threes, put on the floor, switch everything, one through five. The Hornets don't have that. <coughs> I'm sorry. <clears throat> Fuck. It's like literally. <coughs> mm. I need some water, bro. But, um... Yeah, but the Hornets don't have that. Oh, my God. Like, I literally feel something caught in my throat. The Hornets just don't have that. A 6'10 guy, switch everything. You know, like, 
PJ Washington's like six seven, bro. You know, you think he's tall like PJ is like six seven. PJ and Miles are like the same size, bro. It's just PJ has a longer wingspan. But they're about the same size. So Jalen McDaniels being six ten, six eleven, but like a forward, you know, he's kinda like, like KD esque type shit. You know what I mean? I'm not gonna say he's KD, for me, little baby KD. But he's KD esque in his frame. And I mean, he played 23 minutes, but like at halftime, he had 11 points, six rebounds in nine minutes. 11 and six in, in nine minutes. <clears throat> that's better than the whole game for Plumley. <laughs> I mean, that's better than the whole game for a lot of people. Like 11 points, six rebounds in nine minutes at halftime. And maybe it's because he was playing against his brother, but I I honestly just believe that Jalen Daniels is a good player and he's one of my favorite players on the Hornets, and he has been since he was a rookie. Because I just always thought he would just intrigue him, bro. Like, let's play him and see what he can turn into because he could be Kevin Durant. You don't fucking know it. You know, so I'm glad he's playing with P.J. returning. I hope he continues to play. Like, McDaniels played 23, P.J. Played, played 24. I think that's cool. I think that's cool, man. Shit, I, I, you know, I think just me damn had deserved that shit, bro. And I honestly love the rotation the way that it is. Um, I think it's straight, bro. I think it's straight. We're we're a really deep team, man. We're a really deep team. And uh, it's like we're really almost impossible to beat when Kelly Oubre has a good game. We're almost impossible to beat, bro. Because we have a deep five. Then you have to worry about Martin, Oubre, McDaniels might give you some bucks off the bench. You know, you just, you know, you never know. And then Borrego does a pretty good job staggering bench players with the starters. So it's like, you know, even though you're worried about the bench, it's like you still have a starter or two out there that can still give you buckets with that unit. So, I mean, we're going to be a scary team come playoff time, bro. Because we deep. We're deep, bro. You get somebody in foul trouble, it's like, okay, somebody else is coming in. It doesn't really matter. You know, because the only thing I'm really concerned about is when we play teams with dominant centers like, you know, Carl Anthony Towns. And, I mean, he had a good night. He had, like, 25 or something like that. Let me see. Yeah, he had 25, but he was a negative 12. Almost everyone. Nobody on the on the uh, Timberwolves has a positive plus minus except for Jared Vanderbilt. He's plus five. Everybody else is negative uh, except... Uh, they have a couple of people that play like five minutes that are plus four. But, you know, they literally were just like garbage time minutes because we were up by like 25. So, you look at it, Carlton Lee Towns has 25 and 7. That's damn good we hold him to 25 and 7. He didn't have 20 rebounds? He didn't have a double-double? Hmm. They're like, hey, bro, I'll take that. He had six assists. He, for me, he had a little triple single. little, you know, a little double single. I don't fucking know because he had double-digit points. But either way it go, holding, you know, he didn't have no double-double. Carl Anthony Town didn't even have a double-double against us. Anthony Edwards had 11 points. And D'Angelo Russell had 18. He was like, who? Okay. We'll take that. We'll take that. So it's like, bro, I'm proud. Because I was kind of, you know, worried. Now, when I saw Plumley was out, I really didn't get care because I knew either way, you know, Carlton Towns going to have a good game. And, um, shit, I think this really just proves that we don't need Plumley, like, literally at all. Like, you know, if Carlton Towns, if we can survive Carlton Towns without Plumley, in what, situa in what situation do we need Plumley? We don't. We don't at all. So... We'll see how the, how you know the rotation goes, you know, moving forward. One thing about Borrego, he's not scared to change a lineup or change a rotation. Like all of a sudden, a player can be out the lineup for two weeks, and then all of a sudden, you know, that player is back out there. And it's just kind of what Borrego does. But uh, you know, we'll, we'll see when Pl if Plumlee's available tomorrow night in Houston. Um, I don't know. We'll see. We'll see. I'm not tripping off it if he's not. I'm not tripping. I mean, it's the Rockets, bro. Jalen Green's out with a hamstring. It's it's a fucking G League team with Christian Wood. I don't even know. I think Christian Wood's hurt. I don't know. Let me see. I think Christian Wood's hurt. I don't even think Christian Wood is healthy. I don't think. 
Let me see if he can play tomorrow. <clears throat> Let me see. I don't think Christian Wood is playing tomorrow. Oh my god. Excuse me. <laughs> Excuse me. Not. Yeah, okay. I think, I think Christian Wood is playing. Jalen Green's the only person that's on the injury on the injury list. But either way it go, you know, we're not worried about the fucking Rockets. But at the same time, we do need to stay focused because something like that could be a trap game. And then you have the uh, Bulls coming up. So, you know, got to stay focused throughout. But it's like you kind of, you know, you win that game. You look at it like, okay, you'll fuck around, be 14-8. and eight. The Celtics lost tonight. They dropped a 10-10. and 10. You know, so it's like the Hornets being five games over 500, bro. <laughs> that shit feels amazing. <laughs> that shit feels amazing. Like, wow. And then, you know, we got the Bucks on our ass. They're 11 and 8. You know, Hawks 11 and 9. So, you know, we got to keep winning. And the thing is, we done played a lot more games than anybody. We done played a lot more games. Like, what the fuck? Like, why do we play two more games, three more games than a lot of teams? The Knicks are 10 and 9. The Wizards are 12 and 7. We're 13 and 8. To me, that's the same thing, but their percentage is higher. Their percentage is 63. Our percentage is 62. So, I don't know. They play OKC next, right? No, they play the Mavs tomorrow, so they might lose. Yeah, they played OKC today, and they won by two, barely. Yeah, the Wizards are ass. They're falling off. Um, they split one with the Heat, lost to us, lost to the Pelicans, beat the Thunder by two. If you're beating the Thunder by two, you're ass. Um, that's just, you know, they're, they're ass. But I fully expect... You know, the Bucks are going to keep winning and rising up. And, you know, the Hawks are, are hot right now. They're on the seven-game winning streak. So, you know, I, I definitely expect the Hawks to fall out. I think we can move up to that four spot and try to hold on to that and possibly keep moving up to three. Because, you know, the Bulls and Heat are about to play. So somebody's going to, you know, the Bulls and Heat are about to play. So somebody's going to drop. Either the Bulls are going to be 12-8 and eight or the Bulls are, or I mean, the Heat are going to be 12 and 8, or the Bulls are going to be 13 and 8. Because, yeah, they play tomorrow, so somebody's going to drop down. So, if we win tomorrow, we'll be 14 and 8. And then, you know, if the Heat are 12 and 8, or the Bulls are 13 and 8, we'll, we'll move up and we'll be fucking second in the East, bro. We might wake up tomorrow, or we'll not wake up tomorrow, but. We might go to sleep tomorrow, second in the East, if things bode well. Like, this Hornets team, hey, man, y'all keep doing y'all fucking thing now. Y'all keep doing y'all thing. I'm proud of y'all boys, man. Like, it's crazy. Like, bro, the Hornets is literally fucking good. Like, this shit crazy as fuck. I'm so fucking proud, bro. Like, I almost got emotional earlier tonight, bro, because I really was thinking, like, Damn, these niggas is actually good. Like, that's crazy. <laughs> that's crazy. That's crazy. But, you know, I'm not going to keep rambling, man. I'm going to go ahead and get on up out of here. It's literally 1130. Um, I'm up watching the Timber, um, watching Duke, hope, hoping Duke loses. Yep, Suns beat the Knicks tonight. Knicks are ten and nine. You know, Knicks. The Knicks had an easy schedule, and and that's all that was. You know, the Knicks had an easy schedule. They were a fluke. They're 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 falling. Um, but one thing I do want to mention about the Timberwolves, they were hot. The Timberwolves were on a five game winning streak, and we broke that tonight. And uh, during those five games, they beat all their teams by double digits. So they were blowing teams out, fucking teams up. And uh, we came in there and we put a stop to that shit. So I'm I'm happy. I um, mean, and you know, I'm looking at it like, okay, they played the Heat, the Pelicans, the Grizzlies, the Spurs, the Kings, and they beat all of them by at least ten points. So, you know, they they beat the Grizzlies ass one thirty eight to ninety five. Like, you know, this and this is a hot team coming in, and and we stepped on them, bro. So, you know, I, I, I got to clap it up and show the Hornets some love and due respect, man, because they're coming out here and playing good teams, bro, and, like, beating them convincingly. It's not like we're going to overtime or we're barely winning by one point. Like, we're taking care of business, bro. Like, we're 
uh, bro, we're five games over 500. Like, we are a good team. We're on pace to win 50 games. You know what I'm saying? 13 and 8, what is that? That's 21 games. So, like, we're, we're really, like, right at the quarter of the season, bro. Like, we right there. We right there, bro. Let's do some quick maps real quick, man. You know what I'm saying? Let's do let's do 13 times 4. That's 52. Like, we're on pace to win 50 games, bro. We right there. Like, so, uh, like I said, man, I'm proud of this team, bro. And, uh, you know, it's been a long time coming for us to get to this point. Hopefully, we just stay healthy, man. If we can stay healthy, which, you know, God forbid, hopefully we can. We're going to be dangerous, man. We getting out the first round. We getting out the first round. Like, if the playoff, if the playoffs were to start today, today, bro, we play the Wizards in the first round. We whooping they fucking ass. We whooping they ass. The Nets and Knicks are going to play. Their, the Knicks are going to get clapped. Hawks and Bulls. Bulls are going to beat them. Heat, Bucks, you know, that always seems to be the fucking matchup. Heat and Bucks. Bucks probably take that. And then I'm trying to think how the bracket would go after that. Um, yeah, I can't think how the bracket would go. But, shit, I don't know, my nigga. But if we match up with the fucking Wizards in the first round, nigga, we whooping their ass. That's all I know. Anybody that be getting that four to five slot, we probably gonna whoop their ass. That's all I know. That's all I fucking know. Anyway, either way it go, man. I'm proud of the Hornets. And I can't, you know, wait to just look forward to wins, bro. Like, we're 8-2 and two in our last 10. That shit is beautiful. Hopefully tomorrow that shit says 9-1. and one. Hopefully that shit say 10-0, and 0, you know, in a couple of days after we beat the Bulls, man. 10-0 and 0 in our last 10. Hornets on a 10-game winning streak. <laughs> the Hornets on a 10-game winning streak. Can y'all imagine that? <sighs> man, it's beautiful, man. <laughs> I'm gonna get on that here, yo, man. I'll catch y'all the next one. Thank y'all for listening to my, you know, shit against my foolishness, man. I'm gonna catch up with y'all. Catch y'all the next one. Peace.